Hi, friends. Oh, wait, it didn't wake up. Ah! <laughs> Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life, and I'm coming to you today um, just to talk to you about some stuff that have been in the news, stuff that's coming up in the news. You may have heard Servant of God, John Bradburn, he is having a 100th birthday on Monday, June 14th, so that's next week, and I'm so excited. Now, of course, he was martyred back in 1979. I know that. He's not here on earth for his 100th birthday, but it is still his 100th birthday. And there's so many wonderful events coming up on Monday itself. If you get up at 4 a.m. Eastern time, um, depending on where you are in the world, it's a little bit more reasonable. But if you get up at 4 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, you can go to Radio Chisda, and let me spell that for you. It's a Facebook page, and we don't have anybody who's a regular news service who's broadcasting it. So it's Radio Chisda, which is C-H-I-E-D-Z-A. I'll put it in the description below. So you need to find their Facebook page, and it's at 4 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, 9 a.m. U.K. time, 10 a.m. Zimbabwe time and they're going to have a mass it should be on until roughly around two it's starting in zimbabwe before then because there's going to be time for people to gather there's going to be time for confession so they have all that going on but we're not joining them until 4 a.m is when it's supposed to be live streamed um and then there may be a little bit of talk afterwards so leave a little bit of time you know figure around two hours for that um, why it's great you're gonna get to see Matema you're gonna see where John spent the last 10 years of his life taking care of the beautiful lepers at Matema and there is at least one of them is still alive so there's a couple of them I think still alive there so if you've been going to www.johnbradburnpoems.com some of the poems about the lepers are actually up on the website and you can read them and get to really know the people who live there and who inspire John with their life. Why is that so important to me? So John, you you probably can't see from this black and white picture, but maybe you can. He was an Englishman. His skin was what we call white. Um, and he was there in Africa at Matemwa where the people, their skin color was not white. Remember, I tell the story, maybe you haven't heard it before, of when he was first went there. So I think he was living at Silvera House, a retreat house at the time. And a friend was like, come on, I'm going to Matema. Just come with me for the day. You know, get, get out of the house. Let's go do something different. And when he went, the lepers ran. First of all, they were wearing, first of all, first of all, they were lepers, right? Some may be blind, some may have lost some of their ears. So their skin tissue gets nerve damage and then gets destroyed. So some of them may have been missing fingers or have discolored skin. Some, in fact, I think have lost legs and things. So they have various disabilities and they're wearing numbers around their neck. Numbers around their neck. Think about that one for a minute. So he comes upon these poor sickly people wearing numbers around their neck and they run to go get bags to put over their head because they're too ugly for a white man to see. John wanted none of that nonsense, right? He wanted to stay immediately. This was it. He was helping these people. He was helping to them to see their dignity as children of God. So he, he wasn't there out of some misguided, you know, white savior thing. He just wanted to, as a brother to say, hey, you are beloved. I'm your brother. What can I do for you? That's what he was there for. Of course, the friend he went with talked him into going back to the house and getting his, his meager belongings and, and then coming back. And so he had spent the last 10 years of his life there caring for and becoming friends and brothers and sisters of the people there. They actually called him Baba John, Father John. Um, he cared for their spiritual needs. He cared for their uh, medical needs, for their food needs. He washed them. He bathed them. So he got he would get priests to come in. He would get nuns. He would get nurses. Whatever was needed, he could get them to come in briefly and help. Now, it was a time in Rhodesia of great upheaval, because it was called Rhodesia then. Great upheaval. And I want to stop and say, because the people, remember when they ran and got bags to put over their head because they were too ugly for a white man to see? They didn't say, hey, you. I see your skin color. This is your fault. It's your fault we're living here. It's your fault you destroyed our society. 
You destroyed our economy. You took our land. Give us everything you have. They didn't say that. They were very humble. Um, they'd been told that they were nothing. And John said, no, you're amazing. And they were like, cool. <laughs> I don't know that they were quite like that, but they didn't turn around and turn on him. They saw him for what he was as well, that he was a child of God and that he was someone worthy of respect and taking the time to build a relationship with. with. So it was both parties that saw the value in each other as children of God and that they stopped and got to know each other and built a relationship. And I think when you read John Jordan, you're going to see again and again that he felt he got way more from his relationship with them than he gave in any of his care or attitude. And I see in that a lot, I see the servant leadership that we talk about with Franciscan life. Um, that he was like, he, didn't just, he could have just gone in as a white knight, as a white savior, right? And just given them food he, and, and left. He could have gone in and washed their wounds one day and left. He could have given a, raised a bunch of money, given it to them, and left. Um, he took the time, though, to get to know them, to get to know what their needs were. This is sounding a lot, right, when we just discussed that, that book by Tom Fame, going into the, and meeting the people of Haiti. What do you need? How can I serve you? And for John, it wasn't leaving and fundraising um, and getting to know the people and building relationships and brainstorming and coming back. John stayed there. He didn't leave. But he had many friends in England and other countries who would come and help and who would send them goods to help take care of the people. So he was still able to do a lot of that. Um, and just like St. Francis was inspired by the humble Christ, don't think that John Bradburn thought that he was all that either. He spent a lot of his time writing poetry about the Trinity and about Mary and contemplating God. It's amazing because he is the most prolific poet in the English language, but that wasn't his job. Nobody paid him for that. That's just what he did. And he would say that a lot of that came directly from Mary, that she was really the poet in telling him what to write. And in fact, a lot of his writings, you can go onto that website, and that's www.johnbradburnpoems.com. And not only read the poems, but you can see scans of the original poems, whether he hand wrote them or typed them or did them on a stencil. You can see that they are perfect right out of the bed. There's no editing. They're perfectly fitted to that piece of paper. And they're every scrap of paper. They found after he died that if there's a blank sheet of paper in a book, like he'd written a poem on it. Every little scrap of paper he could get had a poem written on it. And most of the time to the glory of God. Sometimes it had John Bradburn's amazing wit in there as well. So some of them catch you off guard because they're so deep and you could ponder them for years. And some of them are so silly and wonderful and make you laugh and also so deep you could ponder them for years. That is the beauty of his poetry. And it's like us. You may see me as this goofy person who's sitting out in her porch with a fan blowing on her trying to be cool and just give you a little bit of insight as as to who John Bradburn was just like a one-off goofy thing but you know John Bradburn saw more than that we are more than that he could bring that out in people when John Bradburn saw you he saw like gifts and talents and he could help bring them out in people such a beautiful gift such a beautiful gift for us all to be able to see each other that way to be able to build that kind of fraternity and a lot of people say that you know John Bradburn here he a picture of him here in his Franciscan habit how Franciscan he was how truly Franciscan he was he lived like St. Francis did but in the 1960s and 70s how is that even possible when you think about the world then how was that possible? And you're like, well, he went to a third world. That's how he did it. A lot of people living the Franciscan life, or say they Franciscan, you know, go into missionaries in third world countries, don't end up doing what John did. They don't end up, um, they don't end up like John did. They don't. And so how was he able to do it? And a lot of that is he supposedly had a mystical marriage with Mary um, and spent most of his time truly contemplating God and living that out as he helped his brothers and sisters. He contemplated the poor and humble 
Christ in his fellow man. Even when he was helping lepers, he saw God in them. Do we see that God in each other? Do we bring it out in each other? Say, I see that spark of God in you. He's in you. Go to adoration. Go receive the Eucharist. Study. There's so much beauty out there. And John, John would get so irritated if people would destroy the environment, cut down trees for no reason, that sort of thing. And one of the beautiful, beautiful things about John Bradburn in his death, the Memorial Society started by one of his nieces, their main goal is to is to help the people of Matemwa. It's still there. Um, right now we have several fundraisers going. One is with the program Well for Africa. I have featured that on this program. So Well for Africa, I think, is trying to get a water borehole um, to get water year-round for the people. Um, there is, as well, they are raising money to buy 100 mango trees for Matemwa. Now, mangoes can be eaten fresh. They can be dried so you can have them year-round. And if they end up with too many mangoes, they can sell them for a little bit of extra income. As well, they are trying to fund 250 more chicken. Oh, wait, 10, 10 pounds, 10 British pounds, while well, buy you a, a mango tree at Matemwa. I'm just saying, that's not much. What is that, like $15 US? And again, for 25 pounds, I believe, of British money, you can buy a chicken for Matema. So they're going to get the eggs in down the road. They're going to get meat. Perhaps they're going to get little chickies as well. Um, so that can be a continuing project to help take care of people at Matema long term. There's so many beautiful things that going on there. There's a local church, I believe, in Zimbabwe that has managed to pave a lot of the walkways there. Paved walkways. You have people in wheelchair friends living in the middle of nowhere. Paved walkways. Such a blessing. And as well, they didn't just pave the walkways. They planted beautiful gardens around them. I mean, everybody needs that. That loveliness as well as if you know anything about John Bradburn, a lot of people would call him John B. Just because of his love and symbology of the bees. So beautiful. And I'm hoping you get out and, and research more about John Bradburn. There are more events coming. So I get out to the John Bradburn website, scroll all the way down, and at the bottom it says events. And so the biggest one, of course, is starting with this mass that's going to be on Monday, but as well on, see if I got my dates right, the 11th of September in England, they are going to hold a climb. Oh, no, I've forgotten the name of the mountain. It's a little mountain in Cumbria in the UK, and they are going to climb it with the donations, of course, going to the society. Um, and there's going to be prayers, I think. I think the Bishop of Lancaster is giving the prayers at that one. Um, but you can hold a local walk or climb for Matemwa as well and send in the money. No reason why you can't. I know in America here we might not choose September 11th, but why not choose September 11th? You may not get a lot of people turn out, but you may because September 11th, just remember America, the, the, the weeks and months after September 11th, how we flew our flags, how we truly embraced our brothers and sisters here in America. I mean, we became one people. I want us to embrace all people. We are one people building a more fraternal world. And so that could be a beautiful, truly beautiful thing to do, in fact, on September 11th hold a walk unite all people from all nations we are a brotherhood we are the brotherhood of man we are the brothers of the poor and humble christ what else is going on on the 25th of september in manchester england there's actually going to be a huge event they are having a bunch of john bavern's poems have been set to new and original music and there's going to be choir groups and music groups from around the world performing these for the first time at that event and there's going to be a brand new commissioned icon unveiled there as well as all kinds of dignitaries of course are going to be there and archbishops there's going to be a it's great time of prayer and fellowship and during the intermission and i think before and after you'll be able to see some of the relics of john bradburn now here in america we won't be able to see it anywhere but in that one event 
in Manchester. So if we can't make it there, friends, if you have any contacts in the media, we are looking for a media partner to broadcast our event. If you know of anyone, please let us know. We're really looking for a great media partner that is willing to live stream or broadcast the event to the world. And of course, the goal would be to raise more funds for our dear friends at Matemwa. <sighs> so much, so much going on. It's just such an exciting time. Such an exciting time. It's a hundredth birthday. Oh, and don't forget, if you've been watching the 100 Day Poetry Projects on the JBMS YouTube site, don't forget, friends, we've been airing a poem a day up until the 14th, which is the 100th day. There may be one or two after. But on the 14th, we're premiering two exciting new videos. One is some lovely poetry of John's set to photos of him. It's been done so well. It's like John's birthday gift to us. You're going to love it. But as well, there's a video compilation of people from all around the world, all different ages, skin colors, religions. They're all wishing John Bradburn a happy 100th birthday. And it's just wonderful to see that brotherhood, that sisterhood. You know John would love it. And as we I, I end, I want to hold up this picture of John Bradburn. Now, I had it out in the beginning, and I was trying to get it ready. And I'm like, oh, the glare. And then I saw the glare. And it made me think of St. Clair in her gazing. As I look at John Bradburn, can I see myself reflected in his image at all? Do I see any little tiny bit of myself in that image? Now, of course, we do it with the poor and humble Christ is the way to go. But John Bradburn, he was trying to be the image of St. Francis. He was, to, was trying to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. So maybe just one little step closer, if I can see just a little bit of myself at John Bradburn. Maybe I can get a little bit, see a little bit of myself in St. Francis. Maybe I can see a little bit of myself in the poor and humble Christ. And hopefully one day, friends, I can see more than a little bit of myself in Christ. Or rather, I can see more of Christ in myself. <laughs> May God bless us all on our journey, friends. Let's just go ahead and end up with our little prayer here. You ready? In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, your servant, John Randall Bradburn, showed the power of your love by his life and death. May his love of Christ and of Mary, his mother, together with his selfless service to those considered least in the world, be a model for us to follow. We therefore ask for a favor through his intercession. Really praying for that media partner to help us get John's message out to the world so that John's generosity and holiness may be recognized by the whole church. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>